Hello everyone. So we are down to the ninth and last chapter of Ian Stewart's Natural Numbers, and it talks about drops, dynamics, and daisies. So without further ado, let's go into that. So we're gonna be talking about the ninth chapter of Ian Stewart's Nature's Numbers. It's really all about the numerical patterns in nature and how it's beautiful and how symmetrical they look and how they are perceived differently between geneticists and mathematicians. So as nature looks complex as everybody thinks, it's really not. Um, according to Ian Stewart, it's really perceived differently by other people. So let's go for the first case study of Ian Stewart's ninth chapter, which is the water drop. The water drop is basically where everyone thinks that it is the shape of the teardrop or the water drop is in the shape of a curvular semicircle with a point in it, but it's actually not. Where in reality, it has been in many literature in which um, teardrop is not as it not is not as semicircular as you think. It's actually it's actually presented by Howell Prejurine, which is a British, British mathematician in the Bristol University. His main contribution was mainly like fluid mechanics, uh, water waves, and coastal engineering. So either way, uh, with the work of his, his colleagues, uh, he did something what we call the water droplet illustration. So what we see here right now is that the water the root of the water slowly slowly detaches from its roots and as it falls and as it falls it turns into a, a teardrop uh, a teardrop shape which looks like this one and as it falls down it turns into a sphere and that sphere falls down okay so what you can see from the sphere falling down and detaching from its root is that a small thread can be seen and that thread can be defined as somewhat a detachment or a form of thread in which it connects through the it's like a small thread hanging connecting through the droplet and as, as and as that goes on it detaches and it becomes like a bead beaded pearl type of drop so that talks it's really that simple how it's that simple how you can uh describe the water droplet now let's talk about the simulated ecology or the second case study of ion the second the second case study talks about how population dynamics or how the population changes over time or the explanation how population changes over time can be equated or can be represented by differential equations According to Ian Stewart, the best example he can find is the pig and truffle system. What this means is that the pig and truffle system is that the ecosystem has this thing called systematic connection in which a pig tries to find a truffle. The same goes of how, how animals find their prey. So in that case, it's like population is changed through that action. So what does the second case study talk about? Now let me tell you, it's about the professors of the Warwick University, specifically Jackie McGlade, David Rand, and Howard Wilson. The three of them studied this population dynamics thing, and it and it relates it with the traditional equation. So what they made is basically a mathematical computer game. So they have rule sets on how to do it. The game simulation are represented with a red, green, and a gray. Disregard the black because that's just a placeholder. The red means a fox, the green means a grass, and the gray means a rabbit. So according to what they're made, they programmed something in a game. They had four rules. The four rules were basically if a rabbit is next to a grass or in mathematical simulation, if gray is next to green, it moves to that position and it multiplies if a fox is next to a rabbit red next to gray it moves to a position of a rabbit and eats it hence it, hence the red 
disintegrating the gray. And at each stage of the game, the rabbit breeds. Every time the rabbit multiplies from the gr grass green snake go, it will multiply. The grays will become more, mul uh, they, they become into a multiple sets of data. And if the fox has not eaten at all, it will die or in, in a mathematical algorithm, it's just going to disintegrate. So how does this impact the population dynamics? So basically, what they made is an artificial ecology in which uh, creating this e ecosystem where the fox eats the rabbit and if it doesn't eat the rabbit, it dies. So this is a very great artificial representation of how eco ecosystem is affected or how population could be affected by certain means of random events. And lastly, we have the daisies, which technically means the flowers and how they are perfectly symmetrical to each other. So the daisies are derived from the Fibonacci series and how the number of petals are in a sense of Fibonacci. According to Leonardo Fibonacci, in the 1200, we all know that he theorized the, the Fibonacci numbers through the massive growth of rabbits. But the thing that fascinates most mathematicians is that how the Fibonacci numbers are as fascinating or as beautiful as they are. It's really amazing how they can uh, do things like this because, because of the Fibonacci numbers, it created a form of golden ratio that connected to Da Vinci's golden ratio and hence making the golden number. Now, let's talk about the golden number or as I call it, the di divergence angle. The divergen divergence angle is a type of angle in which in a spiral position, you can see a form of primordia. Primordia is basically like a spiral pattern in which you can be found in plants. So this was made by Stefan Duda Duadi and Yves Coder. They explained that the divergence angle or the perfect divergence angle for a primordia is 137.5 degrees. How did they do this? So what they basically did is that they divided two, um, they divided two consecutive um, Fibonacci numbers. So let's say 34 and 55. They divided that and multiplying it by 360 degrees and you get exactly 137.5. And lastly, we have the golden number. So I talked about the golden ratio by Da Vinci. The golden ratio is 1.16.18. But the golden number is basically derived from the Fibonacci numbers. The, between the ratio between two numbers that is really close to 0 0.618034. Remind that number because that's the exact number of the Fibonacci number ratio. As, um, as the Fibonacci numbers goes further, it gets closer to that number. And as it gets closer, it becomes this thing called the golden ratio and hence being called the golden number. And as you can see here, the limit value here is uh, square root of 5 minus 1 divided by 2, or also called as the golden number. That's, that's how they got it. And how does this relate to the primordia? It's because, um, it is because, um, let me rephrase that. The successive primordia, or you can call it the golden angle, it can be derived by 360 times 1 minus the phi, or... The golden number degree is equal to 137.5 as you can see here that's a perfect primordial spiral as can can be derived from what what is in here so in conclusion these three case study uh, these three case studies tackle different topics involving geometry dynamics and the symmetry of nature of objects but the three topics are extremely unrelated to each other, but they both have in common is that they have this thing called natural numbers in which it can be seen through nature in a mathematical way and how it's derived differently from mathematicians. Thank you for watching.